Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, the U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary, Woody, Wally Adameo, who's obviously a diversity, equity, and inclusion hire because of the colour of his skin and not as of his brains, has stated that U.S. government plans to pursue legal action against any country that allows Russian banks to open branches within their jurisdiction. This is alleged to be in contravention of sanctions. Well, whose sanctions? Not the UN sanctions on Russia because they don't exist. What the clown is on about is directives dictated by the US to its vassals to obey its commands. Now, do bear in mind that none of the sanctions on Russia or so-called sanctions, have been imposed by the UN Security Council and just bullying and intimidating tactics by the US in a bid to maintain its global hegemony. And Adi Mayo said not only would branches themselves be prosecuted, but other organisations and companies within the jurisdictions that they cooperate with Russian banks. And Amor also said that Western dominance in global finance had forced most major banks to concede to the pressure. Not they were far more cooperative with the US, the EU and the UK and other coalition countries than with Russia due to their desire to maintain access to the dollar, the euro, the pound sterling or the yen. Now, so he's not only a fool, he spouts nonsense. That were the case, then Russia would be cut off from world trade, which is certainly not the case, as its trade surplus is growing, as is its economy. Now, on the subject of hypocrisy, I have previously noted that a number of US companies have ignored their government and continue to do great business in Russia. Now, they're doing this because they're making serious money and they can afford lobbyists back in Washington to get onto the US government to leave them alone. After all, the US government ignores its own sanctions on Russia, importing nuclear fuel, fertilizer, lumber and wood products to the amount of $7 billion. Now, currently over 50% of US companies that conducted business in Russia have continued their operations since February 2022. Prior to that, 650 US companies were operating across a wide range of sectors in the Russian Federation. Now, 322 organisations representing 49% of the total have ceased operations in the Russian market or have terminated their collaboration with Russian companies. Now, what companies have stayed? Well, a number of major international companies, and these include Procter & Gamble, Colgate, Palmolive, Johnson & Johnson, PepsiCo, Mars and Coca-Cola have maintained their operations in Russia. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm actually going to thank all of you now for watching so far. Now, not only do American companies continue to operate in Russia, but they also generate significant revenue. To illustrate the point, in 2023, the financial results of PepsiCo's Russian subsidiary, according to Infoline rating of the food industry leaders in the Russian Federation, the company's consolidated sales volume increased by 15.5%, reaching 311 uh, billion rubles. That's 3.5 billion to you. That's not loose change now, is it? Analysts attribute this outcome to two key factors. The key inflation beating growth in product prices and the robust expansion of the snacking industry. I mean, the spring, the first stage of the Frito-Lay manufacturing snack and salty uh, a crisp plant, a division of PepsiCo, started operations in Novosibirsk. It's also notable that PepsiCo filed a declaration for the prod production of black caviar flavoured potato chips in Russia, the import of which was banned to the US and, and under sanctions in 2022. PepsiCo has also been able to navigate the milk products market through its subsidiary Wimbledon, which is part of its daily assets in Russia. And they generated a profit of 8.825 billion rubles, and that was up 2.5-fold compared with 2022. I mean, revenue was up 
to 128 billion. That's about 1.5. Uh, billion dollars and that's the highest growth rate in recent years now these developments are occurring against the backdrop of the damaging actions of the u.s authorities who continue to implement new restrictions and try and create obstacles for the russian agro-industrial sector and business in general around the world now another major beverage manufacturer if you consider coca-cola a beverage the Russian division, which changed its name to Molten Partners LLC, generated profits in, te in excess of 10 billion rubles last year. That's about 125 million. That's a 2.2 fold increase on 2022 and the highest figure in recent years. Now, despite announcing the suspension of its operations in 2022, the company sought to retain its brand rights in Russia for Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, etc. The company didn't suspend or sell any of its 10 Russian plans and the aforementioned American assets are currently under the ownership of the Dutch Coca-Cola HBC uh, holdings. In other words, they generate revenue in Russia and they take their profits to their headquarters in the West. Now, another prominent hypocrite is American food manufacturer, uh, which is actually Swiss uh, American, Kraft Heinz. It's yet to determine whether it will maintain a presence in the, the Russian market. But this year, the baby food factories were sold to uh, Chernogoglovka. And they'll be soon producing products under a uh, Gipopo brand. At the same time, the well-known ketchups and sauces of Heinz continue to be bottled at a plant in the Leningrad region and still maintain the brand on their labels. Furthermore, Ross Payton extended the registration of the Heinz trademarks for another 10 years until 2034. Now, the Mondelez operation, which produces Alpen Gold and Milka chocolates, Oreo cookies, Barney Bears, they had a revenue of about $1 billion in 2023, has had some challenges. I mean, Andre Lugovoy, who's requested uh, uh, the prosecutor's office of the Russian Federation have a look at the company as well as the Swiss and Nestle because they were taking profits from their Russian businesses and then transferring them to support uh, sanctions and help the people in Kiev. Oh, I can see why they're doing that but you shouldn't be doing that when you're pretending to be good people. Now the parliamentary state these have transferred about 3.6 billion rubles which is not huge it's only about 36 million. But, but they've all taken about 35 billion rubles, which is about 350. Now, in addition to the American companies, there's very well-known uh, public companies that are making a lot of money. I mean, in the production of feed additives, which is for agriculture. I mean, uh, the revenue of a company called Altec, which is Kentucky-based, and they made a profit of 3.3 billion rubles, and uh, as did Kemen Industries based in Iowa. Now, another company that's not well known is Remington Seeds. Now, they company have continued in Russia, and they basically produce um, agro-industrial seeds. I mean, the company's plant in Stavropol produces uh, the production and export of corn seeds to the U.S. market. I mean. Their revenue um, exceeded um, $80 million, which is a fair old chunk of change for just making seeds. Now, it's worth noting that the foreign ownership of agricultural land, actually in Russia, is pretty significant. I mean, there's 116 million hectares of prime agricultural land is, uh, under foreign ownership, and that includes some of the decent stuff like the Black Earth region, Volga, Siberia, and the Far East. And a significant proportion of the owners and individuals are companies based in well, what we call uh, countries where Russia has poor diplomatic relationships, and that includes the United States and Canada. I mean, naturally, some might actually go. However, the Russian assets of Silgan Holdings, which is a US-based manufacturer of metal packaging for food products, have been placed under temporary management of the Russian Federal Property Management Agency. Now, I mean, there's just another example of companies like um, um, Danone, Agroterra, etc. And they'll obviously be further in there. 
But it was like last summer, the United States enacted legislation prohibiting investors from Russia, China, North Korea and Iran from buying US agricultural land. And a similar approach has been taken in a number of European countries. Meanwhile, the US Treasury Department once again has given permission for American companies to pay their taxes in Russia. And this time it's up until the end of November. The document permits American citizens and companies to make tax payments as well as fees and import duties that they need to do in Russia. It allows them to purchase or obtain permits, licenses, registrations or certificates or other mandatory payments to the Russian Ministry of Finance or the Central Bank, provided that such transactions are carried out in the usual manner and are necessary for the daily activities of US citizens and organisations in Russia. So it just shows you further evidence that the American establishment has once again displayed our lack of integrity and transparency. It's imposing new sanctions against Russia, but facilitating the financial gain of its businesses based in Russia. Meanwhile, the US government supports the seizure of profits from Russian assets based in there and strikes it uh, with American weapons on Russian territories. US companies continue to make a lot of money in Russia. Still, as the old American proverb once says, it's only business, just strictly business. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video about US hypocrisy and hubris, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.